the Louisville Free Public Library. In 2017, we launched the Collider Artist in Residence program. Liz Richter is the January 2021 Virtual Collider Artist in Residence. We are excited to welcome Liz back as she was one of our in-person artists in September 2019. She is a Louisville visual artist and muralist, and we hope you'll join her for her live program. Hi, it's Liz again. I wanted to tell you a little bit about one of my other murals in the Nulu District uh, because it's inspiring this project that we are going to um, do some prep work today. We're going to be dyeing some noodles to get ready for the uh, live Zoom art class that I'll be teaching at the end of January. And so first I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the Nulu Wildflower Mural. It's on the side of Red Tree at the corner of Clay and Market Street in the Nulu District. And I painted that in 2017 as a project for Google Fiber. And it has a lot of different um, natural botanicals that are native to the Kentucky region. And if you look closely, you'll see mint, goldenrod, um, and then my favorite plant is the milkweed plant, which I'm just fascinated with because it has these sort of strange bulbs that um, come off of it and then the, the flower is just a really unique texture. So when I, when I do botanicals, I like to look at shape and color. And so this project that I designed out of noodles is sort of like meant to imitate the shapes and colors that you see in nature. Um, and, and it's a really fun one because it's super tactile. I did this project at home with my uh, four-year-old and I actually, um, and he loved it. So it's been a favorite in the art classroom and like I said, again at home. So I'm gonna show you today how to dye the noodles to get ready for this project because they do have to dry in order to use them for the project. So whatever you have at your house already is fine. You can use lasagna pieces. Um, you can use different sorts of seeds. Basically any noodle uh, will work. Even it's nice to have variety, I will say. You wanna have, like I used one, two, three, four, five different kinds of noodles and it is nice to have some variety and that way as you're building out your floral design, it has like enough variety that it's interesting and fun to use. Um, I have rotini noodles, penne. I just happen to have a whole bunch of pumpkin seeds left over from um, Halloween. I have some rice. If you are buying rice, like if you're going to the store to buy these things, jasmine rice is the best. Um, it's just the whitest and it, it will dye the prettiest. And then I also have little elbow macaroni noodles. And then to use to actually start the dyeing process, you're going to need just plain white vinegar and food coloring. To start this project, the first thing you're going to do is choose a color and a noodle to get started with. The other things you might need as you're working on this project is paper towels. And then I used like the gallon size plastic bags. You can use smaller ones. I just think the bigger ones are easier to spread the noodles out like as you're, as you're kind of squishing things around. If you like to measure, I'm one of those people that when I cook, I just kind of, or when I do art, I just kind of dump it, you know. But if you like to measure, it would be around a fourth a cup of liquid or of, um, of vinegar. And the vinegar just causes the noodles to absorb the, the dye faster. And then I'm going to use, let's do blue. I'm going to use the blue food coloring. And let's do, we'll start with some rice. So however much rice you want to put in your bag, you can do a little or you can do a lot. Um, I would say for every fourth a cup of vinegar, you could do maybe, maybe half a cup of rice is probably, or half a cup of noodles or, you know, whatever you're dying. So use about double that amount to the amount of vinegar that you're going to use. You do not want to use a ton of vinegar. You really just want enough to cover everything because the more liquid that you use, the, the longer it'll take to dry and the more you'll have to like drain out 
once you um, are at that stage. So I'm gonna dump some rice in here, like around a half a cup or so. A little bit more is okay. So I've got my rice in there. And then I like to do around five drops of the food coloring. And kids really love this part if you're doing this together. Um, I, I let my son do this part and he got a kick out of seeing, you know, how the water changes colors and it's just fun. You know, another thing that I've noticed when I'm doing projects with with kids is that if you can get them excited about the process in advance and help them feel ownership of it, it always ends up going better. And I found like, especially for my son who's four, his attention span when we actually started doing the project was probably twice the <laughs> of what it usually is. So I'm just pouring the, the food coloring and the vinegar into the bag and they, with the bright color like blue, they pretty much start changing colors immediately. So there they are in the bag. And then I like to just remove all of the air and seal the bag like that. And then this is another great sensory activity for little kids, is just letting them kind of squish it all up to make all the noodles the color that you want them to be. And this is the point where you can kind of figure out, do I have enough liquid? Do I need a little bit more? Um, I think I have enough, just, just enough. So I don't think I'm gonna have to add any more color to this. But if you're not getting quite the color that you want, you could maybe mix up a little bit more vinegar with more drops in it to make the color brighter. You know, you can kind of play around with it until you get the color that you're looking for. And once it dries, it's pretty much the same color as what you see immediately. It doesn't change colors. It doesn't lighten up too much. It might lighten up just a little bit as it dries. Okay, so I've got all of this blue, and it doesn't look like I have too much extra liquid in it. So to let this dry, once you kind of have it all the same color, a couple different ways you can do this. If you're not planning on doing this, you know, the same day, if you're doing this like a couple days in advance, what I've done is just open the bag like this, and like leave it open out of the way somewhere on a shelf and just let it dry. Now, if you're planning on doing it later that day, you're gonna need to give this a couple hours to dry. So you can take a cookie sheet, you know, a paper plate, something of that nature, and you can pour it out onto the paper plate and sort of spread it all out to dry, okay? Now, the rice is a little easier to dye. That's why I started with it. And you could do this whole project just with rice. You could just dye rice, you know, five or six different colors, and that would be a really fun project. Or you can mix in other textures and things. So I'm going to show you a couple different ones. So here's the rice. We're going to set that aside to let it dry. Uh, let's do a noodle. The noodles are just a little trickier because since they're a pasta, they can get sticky. So there's a couple tricks that you have to know in order to keep your noodles from sticking to each other as they dry. So I'm going to put around half a cup of noodles in there. I like doing a little bit less with the noodles, like I don't dye as much in the same bag. Um, but you could do the same color, you know, multiple times in different bags if for some reason you really need it a lot. All right, so this time um, I think I'm going to do green. And so normally I would, wa I would wash out our, my cup to start over, but because blue and green are right next to each other on the color wheel, it's not gonna make too big of a difference. Um, so let's put our vinegar in first because it's more fun to see it that way. Do another fourth a cup or so of vinegar. And you know, this, this is a little bit of a, of a smelly project. Um, I asked my husband if he thought I'd been cleaning after we did this, and he was like, no, I knew better. 
So I'm doing about five or six drops of the green food coloring. And this makes a beautiful like emerald green. For this project, um, I ended up doing two different color greens. I did like a basic green here, and then I decided to add yellow to the green after I was done with it, and then do a secondary green just for fun. So you can get into those secondary colors by mixing the dye that you have already, like once you're done with one color and you sort of drain it out, you can reuse it. So here is the green. I'm gonna pour it in there. And some noodles take a little longer to absorb the liquid than others, but these penne noodles have been pretty good. Seal the bag. I'm gonna get the rest of that air out really quick. So we just got the noodles in into the bag with some green dye, and then I removed the air out of the bag and sealed it. And then this is again where um, our students can help just kind of squishing the dye around and making sure it gets all over the noodles. And I like to let them sit for at least like 10 minutes or so. Don't let them sit too long because the noodles can get soggy. But usually what I'll do is set it aside and then do my other colors and then I'll drain them all at the end. So we'll do one more color. How about let's do, let's do the macaroni noodles. This will be our last color that we'll do together. And you could start this plan by, you know, picking a floral and trying to imitate the shapes that you see in a floral. You could use my mural for examples of that or just any, um, any flowers that you have around the house, like any dried flowers or really any just a photo of a flower. You, I didn't. I just kind of blindly like just wanted a nice variety of colors and shapes and then we went from there. So it's really up to you how much planning you want to do in this project. Some, some people really like to plan and others like to figure it out as we go. So got some noodles in there. And again, if you want to measure out around a half a cup is about right. Um, but this is not, you know, it's not a huge deal if it's a little more or less. So I just kind of eyeball it. All right, got those in there. And then this time, I think I'm going to use this pink and we'll see how this turns out. Sometimes it turns out as red. So I am gonna rinse my cup really quick and then we will, we will start dyeing the macaroni noodles. All right, I'm back. We're ready to dye one more color of our noodles. We've got macaroni noodles. So we're gonna put about a fourth a cup of vinegar into my measuring cup here. And this pink, it doesn't tend to like be quite as bright. So I'm really going to use a lot of it. Instead of five or six drops, I'm going to do maybe more than that. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How about that? And we'll see if it actually turns out pink or not. You know, the thing about food coloring and the dyes, the colors sometimes don't, like, especially on the warm side, they don't always turn out. Um, to be exactly the shade that you're looking for. So for example, the center here that I used where I dyed the pumpkin seeds, they ended up more brown, but the colors that I used to dye that was half purple or half blue and half red. So on a color wheel, it should have been purple, but that's the thing about using dyes is that you never really know exactly what you get, which is another reason why I like doing this with students because it's a little bit of like a study and um, you know and how dyes work. So I need to stir this up really quick and then we will add this to our macaroni noodle. And what I like about this project is there's really it's messy but because of the plastic bags there's really no part of it that that's you know, kids even as young as three can't do with an adult, you know, there to assist them. So they really can do a lot of the, this themselves. And like I said, it gets them really excited about doing the project and it just kind of creates some energy about like, not only is this a project that I made myself, but I even made the materials to do the project. 
So I'm doing the same thing again. I press the air out of the bag and then I'm just using my hands to squish the noodles into the dye. They're just not as bright as like the blues or the greens. And that's just something I've noticed. Um, yellow dyes really well, green dyes really well, blue looks awesome, but like purple, red, the warm tone, warmer tones, they don't tend to be quite as bright, but it doesn't really bother me. I like, you know, you still have a nice variety of colors, even if they're a little bit more muted. All right, so well, I've kind of laid those out to, to um, absorb some more of the dye for a minute. And I'm going to show you how, if you were to have extra dye, I, don't, um, I think you guys could probably see how that extra dye has accumulated in the corner there. And it looks like I've got a teeny leak. So watch out for that. This might end up being an advertisement for, um, for, for the really good plastic baggies. So what you can do is once you're done dyeing the noodles, you can, this is where an adult probably needs to do this. You can drain most of it out like this, right back into the cup. And then if you were going to use that color on a different noodle, then you can reuse that. So yeah, my bag there did start to leak, which is unusual. So just make sure you're using, you know, plastic bags that um, don't have any holes in them. <laughs> Otherwise things will get really messy really fast. Uh, so like if I wanted to do a teal, for example, I probably won't actually dye another bag of noodles, but I'm just gonna show you what you could do. You could take the green once you're done with this color and you could add just like a teeny bit of blue to it and then create a whole new color and this can be a little addicting. Uh, when I had to make up like enough for a whole class to use, I, sp I spent a whole day doing this and I ended up with pretty much just an entire rainbow of colors because it is really fun to do. So now I've got a totally different green um, that, that I made using the leftovers from my original green. So on the noodles, like I said, it's a little different than the rice. The rice you can definitely just leave in the bag with it open and it will dry over time. It does take a long time to dry that way. You could also pull it out on a cookie sheet, like spread it out flat on a cookie sheet and it would dry really easily that way. For the noodles, you do not want them to be like clumped up like this. If you leave them clumped up, then they will all stick to each other. So for the noodles, there's two ways you can do this. If you don't have a lot of space, when I've done this in a classroom and I didn't have like a ton of countertop space to waste, I would just do like this and flatten them out inside the bag and I would give myself a couple days to let them dry and then just leave the bag open like that and they did dry that way. If you want them to dry faster because you're planning on doing it like later that day or the next day, I would spread them out on either some paper plates or a cookie sheet, kind of like that, so that they're not, you know, touching too much. And then if you leave them like this on a paper plate, they would probably be dry in two, three hours, like enough where you could do the project. And actually sometimes it, it's not a huge deal if they're a little bit damp when you do the project because um, they're actually easier to cut into smaller shapes and manipulate. Now, if you're planning on doing the lasagna noodles, which I just happened to not have lasagna noodles at home, so I didn't bring those today, but the lasagna noodles, you would lay those flat on a cookie sheet to dry, and then when those are totally dry, you can just take your hand and press on them, and if they're totally dry, they will split into all kinds of different shapes to kind of look like um, stained glass, which is really cool. So that is pretty much how you can dye noodles and like I said if you make a bunch of different colors these make great jewelry you can use a string and thread through them um, or like I said you can do a million different designs on um, construction paper or this is on foam board so I'm looking forward to doing this project with you and showing you the step-by-step -step of how to how to make a floral and how to do this collage technique and I hope that you'll join us for that live zoom class in late January. So thank you for watching.